Hey, this is Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today I'm going to show you how to rebuild your fuel pump for your Polaris Razor or Ranger. The fuel pump is responsible for supplying the correct fuel pressure and flow rate to the system. And if these things aren't correct, your machine obviously won't run right. So you're either going to have a problem with the fuel pump or you're going to have a clogged fuel filter. So if you're not sure what's going on there, we do have a diagnostics video on how to check all of that. So be sure to check that video out. But if you do need to get this fuel pump replaced, we have a few different options. You can replace the fuel pump assembly as a unit. That's going to be a lot easier. Or you can rebuild the fuel pump. That's what we're going to focus on today. It is a little more work, but it is also a less expensive option. So we'll get this done. The process is going to be similar for most Polaris Razors and Rangers. There will be a few minor differences, but all the principles will be the same. Now this fuel pump, it's out of a 2014 Polaris Razor XP1000. All right, a few things we have to help us get this job done easier is some contact cleaner, silicon spray. We're going to use that on some O-rings. We have some grease rubber gloves, safety glasses, and rags. As far as tools go, there are a few things you may or may not need depending how far you go into this. But what we have here is our razor blade pick, a couple of screwdrivers. We have our soldering iron and some solder. And then we also have our wire strippers and crimpers. Now, as far as parts go, this is our fuel pump rebuild kit. There are a few other things the kit comes with, but mainly your fuel pump, the filter, that it has this O-ring for your cap when you go to reinstall it. And then you have your pressure regulator. This holds right here. Most of the time you won't need to replace it, but it has it in case you need it. We also have a small socket to help us install a clip. And again, if you don't want to go through all the hassle, this is the fuel pump module if you just want to replace the complete assembly. So the first thing you need to do, obviously, is get the fuel pump out of the machine. And to do that, you want to reference your model specific service manual. And that's also going to give you more information and specs. Now, if you need help doing that, we also have a video on fuel pump replacement where we just take the whole module out and put it back in. So check that out if you need it. And then after that, what we're going to do, we need to be careful with the sending unit right here. We don't want to damage it. And you can remove it if you want to, but it's still going to be connected to these cords. And to me, it's more in the way if I take this off and set it to the side. So I'm just going to be really careful with this. And what we'll start out doing is we have this wire right here down by our pressure regulator. And I'm going to disconnect that. It's held in by that retaining clip. This clip just pops forward a little bit. You can pull that right out. And then on the bottom, so our fuel pump sits right here. And what we're going to do, we have four tabs. We need to disconnect all those. We'll pop this cover off. And then we can take the fuel pump out. And there's going to be a little plastic cap on top of it. So just make sure you don't lose that. And when you're prying on these tabs, don't get too crazy with it. You don't want to break them. So we'll just pull that off and then after that we can remove this fuel pump. Some of the fuel pumps these wires route a little bit differently so definitely pay attention on how the wires route. And then we still have our plastic mounting piece up in the top of this so I'm going to pull it down. And then pay attention to how this goes. So the orientation we have these indents right here and the other side doesn't have those so the indents they'll line up with the top of this fuel pump right here. It has the positive and negative signs right there. So it just goes like that. And then you have that O-ring that sits on top. We're going to be replacing that O-ring as well. The other thing on this pump, there's a rubber piece on the bottom. The indent is going to be facing up. So I'm going to set that to the side. And then the wires on this pump, you can either cut them off and our new pump comes with new wires, but we're actually going to reuse these old wires and solder them in place. So it's kind of up to you how you want to do it, but in my opinion, the solder is a better option. And to get this wire out, all we're doing is taking a soldering iron. We'll put it on the end of the solder right here, and I'm going to lightly pull on that wire.
Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And just keep in mind that the blue goes to the positive side and the black goes to the negative. So now I'm going to do the same thing on our new fuel pump. Now an easy way to not mess this up is as soon as you take one of these wires off the new pump, you'll put the old wire on and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. And to help us do this, I'm going to add just a little bit of extra solder right there. And then we can just heat this up and put the wire in place. Now that we have the black connected, we'll go ahead and remove the blue one and replace the original wire back in place. On this side, I'm going to add just a little more solder right here. All right, so this piece right here, this is our fuel pressure regulator. And some of the other models, like some of the Rangers, are going to have it further up here. And it might just have a clip that you take out, or it's going to have these tabs like ours. But some machines, and depending which machine you have, the rebuild kit will either tell you to run the original one or replace it. But on ours, we're going to replace it. So how we remove that is the same way we remove the fuel pump cover. We just need to loosen up all four tabs and pull this thing out. Now when you're removing these tabs, I do want to point out it can be kind of difficult and it's going to help if you have another person there to help you with that. And what we're going to do is we're going to get a screwdriver and we're going to pry up on this relief valve. And then with the other screwdriver, one at a time, we're going to loosen up these tabs until they're all popped out. So this is our new fuel pressure relief valve. And as you can see, we don't have these bottom components right here on it, so we need to take the old ones off. And this piece right here, it's pretty much just crimped on, right on the end. So to get it off, you might have to take a pick or a little screwdriver. You'll bend these tabs and loosen them up just a little bit. You don't want to go more than is necessary. And then you should be able to pull it off. You might have to pry just a little bit with a screwdriver. So we'll take that off and this plastic piece and we'll put both of these onto our new part. But <clears throat> for this new part, we're gonna have to bend these tabs back down so it holds onto it tight. So I'm gonna place our plastic piece in the correct position. And when you do this, make sure this tapered ramp is going to be going towards the top. Then we can slide this retainer into place. And this one fit on there nice and snug. It's not going anywhere. So now we're ready to reassemble this. So to put this thing in, to make it easier, I'm just going to use a little bit of silicone spray right here on the rubber parts. All right, so now that we have this body cleaned out, we want to make sure that our pressure regulator is in the correct orientation. So we have this tab facing this corner, and then I'm going to press this into place. Then you're going to want to check and make sure all four tabs are locked in. Make sure this ring on top is still tight and that this piece isn't going anywhere. Now for your typical rebuild, you'll be able to just go back together with your fuel pump assembly from here. But since we're showing how to do everything on this one, what we're going to do is our kit, it comes with this high pressure hose and we're going to replace it. But I highly advise not replacing it if there is no damage to it. 
So you want to do a visual inspection of it, and if it looks okay, just run it. But if you do see damage to it, then you do want to replace it. So what we're going to do, we'll cut this zip tie, and then since this is hard plastic, we're probably going to have to use that X-Acto knife and lightly cut through it. Make sure you don't damage the body on the fuel pump, and then we'll remove that hose. All right, so we got this end off. I do want to point out, if you had to cut it like us, make sure you inspect this surface right here where you cut it. Make sure you didn't gouge or damage this piece. And it's, we're using a brand new X-Acto knife blade. You want it really sharp. We were really gentle, and ours actually looks like it's in good condition. So we know we're good to go. If this piece does get damaged, that's when you're gonna to have to replace the fuel pump assembly. And that's why I say, at all costs, if you don't need to replace this hose, don't do it. But again, if you have to, then that's what you gotta do. So just be really cautious when you do it. Our rebuild kit comes with three different sizes of hoses and you just need to match up whichever hose is gonna fit with your pump. The correct high pressure fuel hose for this pump is gonna fit snug on this bottom fitting. And then on the top, it's gonna fit snug enough to where we're actually gonna to have to heat this up and get it pliable to go into place. And then in the kit, it actually comes with a hose clamp. This is gonna go on the bottom side. And then the top side, we don't run a hose clamp on this particular pump. So again, we just got that warm and then we seated it all the way down onto that fitting against the top of this housing right here. All right, now at this point, I'm gonna install my hose clamp. I'll get it out of the way, and I'm gonna route this hose to the correct position. Just be careful, since this pump can come apart further, just make sure you're not pulling on these wires right here. And now I'll tighten down the hose clamp. All right, now we have our high pressure fuel hose on. Now we can get back to what most of you guys will be doing. So at this point, we have the pump wired up. We're gonna remove this cap, and then we'll make sure both of these wires are set down into place. We can install this cover, and again, it has these detents on it that match with our pump. So once this plastic piece is sitting in place, I'm gonna take the new O-ring and I'm just putting a little bit of silicone spray on it. And this is just gonna help everything slide into place when we actually install this pump. So now I'll install that O-ring on the end of the pump. And then we can set this into place in the holder and don't forget this rubber cushion at the bottom. It has the two indents for the tabs on the pump, so make sure you're placing that correctly. Now, if you're working on a razor like us, at this point, you can usually just put this filter on right now, but if you're working on a Ranger, you're gonna have to install this housing first, and then you can install the filter. So we'll get that pressed down into place. So once this pickup screen is pressed into place, you can see there's this tab sticking up and we need to reinstall this clip right on the end. So to help get the clip into place, I'm gonna put a little grease on it and I'm gonna use this little socket to press it down. And the grease is just gonna hold it to that socket and then I want to point out that the convex side is going to be facing out once it's installed. All 
All right, once the clip is in place, we can now install the pump back into the assembly. So to do that on this pump, I actually need to compress this a little bit so we have enough room to get our wires routed correctly. And then I'll show you on the back side, we're just making sure the wires are coming down that crevice. All right, and then we'll take this black wire and we're going to connect it to its original position and make sure that it's in its retaining clip. The last thing we need to do before we install this into the machine is zip tie these wires back up like they were before. And when you do that, keep in mind that this pump assembly is going to compress. So you want to make sure you're tying to a spot that's not going to be moving. And we'll trim the end of the zip tie and we're good to go. And that's all there is to rebuilding your fuel pump. If you need these parts, they're available on our website along with just about anything you could want for your machine. So be sure to check that out. We offer free shipping on orders over $75. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have a lot of other helpful content on there. Thanks for watching.